اب بشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری والو لکھ داتن میں لسانی افکاو کولی بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم امری ون I hope you guys are in one shape and good I believe you guys have a good understanding of the holding cost and the turnover as it was really important for you guys to first understand the whole concept of the holding cost and the turnover to before we proceed into part stock management the last time when we uh, we were going through this powerpoint presentation uh, this this is a page where we left off and i'm just going to go through these points once again just to refresh your mind that uh, when we are uh, going through this uh, reordering phase we need to understand which what are the main points of focus that we need to keep in mind which one is what parts what are the parts that we need to order we cannot just order each and every part in the warehouse the second thing is how much quantity should we stock how much quantity do we have and how much additional do we need to order to keep our stock levels the third one is when to reorder when is the point that you feel like this is the time that we need to reorder the parts and then how much what is the quantity that we need to reorder and the last one how frequently to order you're ordering three pieces five pieces ten pieces but how often should you order these parts it all depends on how much quantity you should be stocking in your warehouse what is the demand of your spare part to uh, to get a better understanding on this one we're gonna go through the product life cycle the basic idea is pretty simple it's like each and every thing which exists in this universe has a life cycle there's a start there's a middle and there's an end same like that any spare parts the product of uh, the product life of any spare part it starts there's an intro and a nursery session and then comes the maturity level the first uh, session the first uh, phase is called nursery or intro session the second phase is called the maturity level and the third phase is called the decline now during nursery this is the time when the, the demand of the spare part increases for example there's a, a new s class has been introduced and the people have started already started to buy that car and the car is already starting to come for uh, repairs or any sort of Uh, upgrades or whatever so this is the time this is called the nursery and intro part this is the time where the demand is increasing time by time time more people are buying the car the, the parts especially for the service item is is increasing and this is the time you need to consider your sales are rapidly going high so you need to see what how fast is the movement of the parts of selling how faster they're being used and how much more do you need for the next 3 or 6 or 12 months depends on how you are forecasting then there is the maturity level this is the level that the part is highly in demand the car being is been here for a year now or 6 uh, months and most of the people own that specific model now and they come for servicing they come for body parts and these are uh, this is the time that you need to focus on which parts are mostly in use and what are the parts that you need to order during the maturity level what we need to keep in mind is during the maturity level we try our best to keep the required stock in our warehouse uh, because as per as you guys have i think you have you guys have idea now that our sales our profit margin our profit all depends on the availability of the spare parts if the part is not available and the customer is going to go to our competitors and this is not good for the business so this is the, this is the time that we need to be very very uh, we need to give our full focus to the availability of the parts and then the third phase is called the decline phase now this is the time that we need to be considering that there's a new model in Uh, out there and the parts that for the previous model are not that fast moving so we need to 
go through our previous history of last three months, six months, or 12 months. Um, most probably we go through three months and we see the movement for the past three months, how it's been going. And, and also one another factor that we need to understand here is to whom the parts have been sold is going, which customers the parts are going to, is, is it only going to the workshop site or uh, is it also going to OTC uh, over the counter sales? For example, if the part is usually used in the workshop and monthly 10 filters are going to the workshop. So for the last, that shows that for the past three months, the sales was 30 pieces. But in the second quarter, suddenly you see the sale was 100 pieces. Uh, so you're going to think, okay, let's place an order for 100 pieces. But what you need to understand here that quarter before that the sale was 30 pieces, quarter before that the sale was 35 pieces. Why suddenly the the sale is so high? And then you're gonna go through to which the part was sold. Was it a one-time sale? What is uh, what's happening? So if it's just a one-time sale, and someone bought this uh, once uh, the one big order, so there were additional 60 or 70 pieces sold to some customer. And you feel like this is going to be the forecast. No, this is not the way you need to be very careful in understanding the movement of the spare parts to whom it was sold. And if there is a sudden raise or a decline, then you need to go through and you need to check your sales, what's happening uh, before you reorder anything. So this is the simple concept of uh, life cycle of any product. It's the beginning, it's the highest demand level, and then there's a decline. Moving ahead, the forecast calculation, how is it done? Reorder levels and reorder quantities are based on the following elements. The quantities that you're going to be ordering and the frequency of those orders. This is, this is something that you need to understand. The quantity that you order for stock and the frequency, how frequently you order that quantity for your stock depends on the following thing. Your forecast demand through your lead time and your review time. We're going to go through each and every factor of this, uh, like lead time, review time, safety factor. We will go through each and every one. So you get to know what I'm, the basic idea for uh, reordering. Your forecast demand, when, you, when you're reviewing your forecast demand, you should keep in mind the lead time and the review time. You should keep in mind the safety factor and you should also keep in mind the order frequency. Now what's the lead time and review time? Let's go into the details. Now the lead time consists of two factors here. One is the process order and one is the deliver goods. When you're ordering any spare part, you don't expect the spare part to be delivered as soon as you press enter. You put the quantity, you put the part number, you put enter and voila, the part is here. Nope, that doesn't work like that. You need time to process that order. They, that order takes time to be delivered. So when you're ordering a spare part, you need to keep in mind, for example, the movement is uh, five pieces in last three months, three months, five pieces. You have two pieces now. So you need to keep in mind if I order three pieces, how long it's going to take to, for those three pieces to be available in our branch. Because in three months, we need to have five pieces sale. So we should have at least five pieces in our stock because this is our demand. Our demand is three months, five pieces. You have two pieces. Now, according to that demand, you're going to order the part and you're going to keep in mind the process time the time it's going to take for the part to be available in your branch. So I, but I would suggest that don't wait until your available stock is two. You can order when your available stock comes to three. So at least you have a safety stock option with you and you still got enough time to order for spare part. This also the second factor which affects is the review time. Now the review time consists of extract order now that extract order is from the supplier that from where you're ordering the part when you submit the order 
uh, like for us, if we submit the order late in the afternoon or evening, it's going to be processed the next day. So you need to keep that in mind when your supplier is going to extract the order and start working on it. The second thing is consider the actual order levels. Uh, that act, in simple words, that means what is the availability of your supplier? Maybe the way maybe you're ordering uh, 20 pieces. Now RLC only has 15. Now they're gonna send you the 15 pieces after fulfilling all the VOR orders, vehicle off-road orders. So there's a priority of demand. The stock orders are not as high priority as uh, the VOR orders. If the vehicle is off-road, you need to understand and you need to keep that in mind. You're ordering a stock order, so the supplier is gonna fulfill the high priority orders first, and then they're gonna move to your order. So even if you saw at the time of order, there were 20 pieces available in RLC or with your supplier. So that doesn't mean that they're gonna send you all the 20 pieces. They will send you if they don't have any higher priority order. But if they fulfill their high priority orders and they're left with only 15 pieces in their stock. So first, they're, they're gonna send you only 15 pieces and then they're gonna reorder stock from GLC or from their supplier or whatever. So you need to consider the possibility that the, the stock from where you're ordering the stock quantity, it might change after you place the order and you need to keep that time review, review time in your mind. Submit order to supplier. The same thing if uh, the parts are not available in RLC anymore and they order the part from GLC. So you need to consider the possibility that if through any uh, if by any chance they are sh they get a shortage on their uh, uh, stock, how much time is gonna take them to get this part from Germany, a GLC, and send it to us? So this is also one possibility that you need to keep in mind when we're ordering for stock. Then it comes to our receiving. And receiving means it's not uh, the time that you receive and you unload you. The bars are gonna be loaded on a trailer. The trailer is gonna take seven to eight days or 10 days, depending on the customs and so many other things. Uh, the licensing, uh, the uh, like we have so many requirements even uh, in Saudi Arabia here. But it depends on the requirements for travel from travel authorities to certifications to getting all the permissions and then the travel time. So this time that you're gonna wait for the items to be received, including your checking, when the parts, when you receive the trailer, you're gonna unload it and you're gonna check those spare parts. And then you're gonna store them into the location. So this period of time also comes under the review time. Then it's updating of your storage quantity. Once the parts are received, they're checked that there's no uh, shortages or any any sort of discrepancy in your stock. You store them in the location physically, but you need to submit everything in the system for the quantities to be updated. This thing, this also comes under review time. So forecast demand depends on your lead time and your review time. This is the time that you should keep in mind and when you're considering to order any spare part, you should first see how much, what is the availability of the spare parts in RLC or GLC. If it's if the RLC quantities are less than what are your required quantities, then you need to keep in mind. Or if or it's close uh, to your ordered quantity, you need to keep in mind the possibility that if they have a higher priority orders, they're going to fulfill those priority orders first and then they're going to move to your stock order because stock order is not as high priority as our vehicle offload VOR orders or any urgent order that they get. And what you need to understand, especially in our business, that RLC is a regional logistics center. It doesn't mean that they're going to only supply 
to Saudi Arabia, they're going to be supplying to Bahrain, they're going to be supplying to Kuwait, Qatar, all the Middle East. So you cannot just consider that uh, in Saudi Arabia we have uh, five urgent orders, so I'm good to go. They have 25 pieces. In Saudi Arabia we have five urgent orders, and I can go for the 20 pieces as stock. There is the possibility that there are other countries who have urgent orders, and then there are other countries who are also ordering for stock. So when you're ordering for stock, you need to keep in the review time that if this part, if this quantity is not delivered me on this, uh, if they run out of the quantity, uh, the available stock, they're going to order from Germany and it's going to take some more time from GLC to reach RLC and then RLC to us. This is the lead time that we need to keep in mind then the extract, uh, then uh, receiving time. Uh, checking, storing, and updating the stock. So I think I'm going to stop until this. I'm going to give you guys some time to go through this one. This is lead time and review time. And in our next uh, 